Hi, I'm Charan Sachar from Federal Way, Washington. I work full-time as a software engineer and work with clay in my spare time. Today, I'm going to make my sassy ceramic teapot. Welcome to my studio. This is where I make all my pottery. First, I'm going to make a sketch of the teapot I'm going to make. Give it a spout and maybe give it some attitude. That looks good. Now that I have my sketch ready, I'm going to take some clay and I'm going to wedge it to remove all the air pockets from it. My clay is ready and ready to go on the wheel to get its shape. Let me see what tools I'll need. I'll definitely need a sponge. I'll need a wooden knife. I'll need my needle tool. And maybe some ribs too. I'm going to use my wooden rib to do the final shape and use my rubber rib to smoothen the outside of my teapot. I'm going to use my wooden knife to remove the excess clay from the bottom of the teapot. I need to throw a spout. I need to make the spout really narrow, so I need to throw it really slowly. I'm going to wait overnight till it's leather hard and ready to trim. After drying overnight, it's ready to be trimmed. First, I need to flip it over. The bottom becomes the top and the top becomes the bottom. The reason I do this is so that my lid fits in much better. Earlier, I used to make the lid separately and they never fit right. I first need to go ahead and secure it with the help of these logs. I'm going to use my trimming tool to trim my pot now. I'm going to smoothen it with my rubber rib. I'm going to mark where I'm going to cut my lid. I'm ready to alter the shape of my teapot. I'm going to pinch it and shape it from the inside, pushing out and turning it into a nice, round, altered teapot such that it looks like it's dancing. I like to give a luxurious shape to my teapots because it reminds me of the Bollywood movies. There's a lot of singing and dancing, and that's how I like my teapots. I'm going to let my teapot dry overnight. I'm going to roll out a slab for the bottom. I'm going to score both the bottom of the teapot and my slab and attach them both together. I need to put some slip on here so that I can attach it to the slab. Slip is basically a mixture of clay and water. I'm going to take my needle tool now and cut open the base. I'm going to finish off the bottom of the teapot and make it nice and smooth. I'm going to cut open the lid with this tool. I'm going to attach a flange so that the lid doesn't slide off after the teapot is ready to pour tea. I need to now pull a handle to attach the teapot. I'm going to go ahead and attach the spout to my teapot. Now that the spout is attached, I'm going to attach the handle. This looks good. Now the teapot is complete. I need to let it dry really slowly for maybe up to 10 days, and then I can bisque fire it to 1945 Fahrenheit. Now that my teapot is completely dry after 10 days, I'm going to bisque fire it. I need to put the goddess back on my kiln so that everything goes fine. If she's not sitting on the kiln, nothing goes right. Now that my teapot is bisque, it's ready to glaze. I think I'm going to choose this blue-green glaze. I'm ready to put wax resist on my teapot. 
After applying the wax resist and when I dunk it in the glaze, the glaze is not going to touch the bottom of the kiln shelf. This way my shelves will be protected. I'm ready to stir the glaze. This is my favorite tool for stirring the glaze. It's a toilet brush. I'm going to use the tongs to dunk my teapot in the glaze. I'm going to now put some brush marks with another glaze on this teapot. Now that I have glazed my teapot, I need to wait for 24 hours for it to dry completely. I'm going to then put it in the kiln and fire it up to 2185 Fahrenheit. I hope my kiln goddess was nice to me this time. Wow, my teapot is all complete and the glaze looks just beautiful. This looks really nice. <laughs>